Hello and welcome to Pioneering Proofs. In this video, I will show you why the gradient of a function is orthogonal to its corresponding level curve in three dimensional space. And then, as usual, I will try to generalize this idea to higher dimensions of space. Before we begin the proof, I want to clarify that if the dot product of two vectors is equal to zero, and both of their magnitudes are greater than zero, then it must be true that the two vectors are perpendicular to one another. In other words, this means that they must be separated by 90 degrees. We can prove this by using the definition of the dot product, as demonstrated here. And now we will begin the proof. We will first examine the three-dimensional piece. So just so that we can visualize what is going on here, I chose a cone as our surface, but really you can choose any surface you want. So in essence, what we have here is a three-dimensional space described by z is equal to a function of x and y. If we then introduce a plane described by z is equal to k, where k is some constant, then the intersection of this blue surface with this green plane would be some curve described by f of xy is equal to k. In most cases, this intersection would form a line. So we can parametrize it by a single variable, which we will call t. Therefore, we can also describe this curve with a position vector we will call r, which is a function of t. If we then take the derivative of both sides with respect to t, then we can evaluate the left side using the multivariable chain rule, and the right side is just equal to zero. And then we just have to recognize that the left side is just the, uh, the dot product of the gradient of f of xy with the derivative with respect to t of the position vector describing the level curve. So let's take this a step further and delve into a more general case. So in general, if we have an n-dimensional surface described by x sub n is equal to uh, some function of r, where r is the n minus 1 dimensional position vector, and we have a plane described by, um, we have a plane described by x sub n is equal to k, where k is a constant, and if we intersect the surface and the plane, then if this intersection forms a line, then we can parametrize it by t, and therefore describe this intersection with the equation, um, uh, uh, f of r of t is equal to k, where r of t represents the intersection line parametrized by t. If this is true, then we can take the derivative, um, oh yeah, sorry, uh, with respect to t of both sides. On the left side, we can expand the function using the multivariable chain rule. And on the right side, uh, the derivative of a constant is just zero. And so we can say that, that the dot product of the gradient of f of r of t with a derivative uh, with respect to t of r of t is equal to zero, meaning that for the level curve, the gradient is orthogonal to the curve. So this proof for why the gradient of a function is orthogonal to its level curves only works for three-dimensional space or higher, because only in three spatial dimensions does it become possible that we can intersect some manifold with a level plane to form a line, or a one-dimensional curve. But in higher spatial dimensions, the intersection of your n-dimensional function with your n-dimensional plane must be able to be parametrized by a single variable which we called t. For example, in four-dimensional space, this means that the intersection of your 3D slice with your 4D function must be some kind of line instead of, you know, instead of a plane, because usually in four dimensions, like, you know, your intersection would form a, uh, a plane instead of a line. But we want the special case where it forms a line, and this is true for higher dimensions as well. To demonstrate what I mean, let's consider our 3D cone. As we stated before, 
The intersection of the cone-shaped manifold and the flat plane for a slice in the z-axis would be a circle, but this is true for all cases except one. Note that if we move the green plane up along the z-axis until, until it reaches the uh, tip of the cone, the intersection is, re is reduced in dimension from a one-dimensional curve, which is that circle right there, to a zero-dimensional point, which is that point right there uh, below that circle. And this is the exact same kind of thing that has to occur in higher dimensions in order to apply this formula that we derived. Because this formula that we derived only works for uh, one-dimensional curves. So it would have to be the case where some n-dimensional manifold is intersected with an n-dimensional level, quote, surface to form a one-dimensional curve that resides in your n minus one dimensional intersection. To illustrate the whole concept clearly, we intersected some surface with a plane, and we projected the resulting one dimensional curve into the xy plane. In this case, the resulting intersection is a yellow circle described by R of t. When we take the gradient of the cone surface, we get a set of vectors in the xy plane that point in the direction of steepest ascent in the z direction. So we can evaluate the gradient at all points on our yellow circle. So we still have the same gradient field, except now we focus on all vectors that are located on the yellow circle. You can see in the diagram that these vectors are purple and they point inward, all at the same magnitude due to the geometry of the cone. Furthermore, we have the black vectors paired with each purple vector going around the circle in a clockwise direction. These black vectors are tangent to our yellow circle because we formed these black vectors by applying the derivative operator with respect to t of our yellow circle described by r of t. We proved that the dot product of the purple and black vectors is equal to zero, and therefore they are orthogonal. This has been an interesting multidimensional geometry concept here on Pioneering Proofs, and thanks for watching.